Item Number SCP-4003 Level 4-4003 Classified Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A 2km area surrounding SCP-4003 and Provisional Site-1200 has been designated as a protected area. Civilians entering the perimeter are to be intercepted and turned away. Only personnel specializing in archaeology, paleontology, and geology may be assigned to Provisional Site-1200. All extracted artifacts and fossils recovered from SCP-4003 are to be stored in Site-11's intensive care item storage after being catalogued. Excess fossils deemed to be non-anomalous may be donated to the Museum of the Rockies via a Foundation Front organization, the Southern Canadian Paleontologist Group. Any mentions of the town of Temperance found in historical documents and period journals are to be expunged. Description SCP-4003 is the group designation for the archaeological remains of the town of Temperance and its citizens, found in the Hell Creek Formation near Jordan, Montana. Fossils, objects, and remains found within SCP-4003 date to the Upper Cretaceous Era. Footnote 1 Due to the roughly similar location of discovery and dated time of origin, investigation of a connection between SCP-4003 and SCP-3834 is underway. The town's few buildings included a saloon, sheriff's office, trading post, general store, and domestic buildings along its main street. Temperance primarily served as a rest stop for caravans heading to Helena from the Minnesota Territory and had a small permanent population. The calculated population is estimated to have been 40 civilians and 10 horses and other livestock. Though little information on the town is available, it is mentioned in the journals of Gold Rush settlers between 1859 and 1866. Though the exact date of the town's disappearance is currently unknown, it is believed to have vanished in November of 1866. Following its disappearance, temperance and its population manifested in the late Cretaceous era about 66 million years ago. It is believed most, if not all of the inhabitants and livestock perished from oxygen poisoning due to the increased levels of the chemical compound present in the Earth's atmosphere at the time. Any survivors were then likely to have perished from exposure, disease, famine, and the predatory megafauna. The town of Temperance reappeared in its exact geographical location in the Upper Cretaceous period. The lithology of SCP-4003 and the surrounding area indicate the climate of the area was subtropical due to its proximity to the Western Interior Seaway, sharply contrasting the aridity of modern Montana. Below are a brief list of fossils and artifacts found in SCP-4003. Footnote 2. No recovered dinosauria fossils have been noted to be feathered. Open Document 4003-1221 Specimens Specimen Triceratops porcus. Quantity 3 Notes Two specimens are believed to be juveniles. Specimen Acheroraptor temerchurum. Quantity 12 Notes Numerous specimens have been found to have suffered various bone fractures. Specimen Thoracosaurus neocesariensis. Quantity 5. Notes Not applicable. Specimen Didelphodon vorax. Quantity 14. Notes Many of the recovered specimens are incomplete. Specimen Struthiomimus sedens. Quantity 4. Notes Not applicable. Specimen Canis lupus familiaris. Quantity 1. Notes. The recovered specimen is missing most extremities, save for the right hind leg. Specimen. Echospherus cabalis. Quantity. 6. Notes. Most recovered specimens are incomplete and have been found in scattered concentrations across SCP-4003. Specimen. Gallus gallus domesticus. Quantity. 3. Notes. All recovered specimens are incomplete. Specimen Tyrannosaurus rex Quantity 2 Notes One of the recovered specimen is missing its head and several vertebrae. Specimen Homo sapien Quantity 26 Notes Specimens vary in quality. There are one infant, three youth, and 22 adult specimens recovered. Open document 4003-1222 Objects Object Glass shards Quantity Unknown Notes Though most glass in SCP-4003 has been found to be naturally occurring, a number of instances display unnatural colors and are believed to have been dyed. Object Silver Crucifix 
Quantity 1. Notes The object was found to be in exceedingly good condition. Object Horseshoe Quantity 7. Notes The recovered objects show heavy oxidation. Object Colt 1851 Navy Revolver Quantity 1. Notes the recovered object was heavily oxidized and in good condition, save for the wooden grip, which has decayed away. Object Springfield Model 1842 Quantity 2 Notes The recovered objects were heavily oxidized and in good condition, save for the wooden stocks, which have decayed away. Object Metal Safe Quantity 1 Notes See Addendum 1 SCP-4003 was discovered in 1871 by gold miners from the nearby Everwood Mine. Foundation field operatives were dispatched to the dig site to evaluate the reports of human remains being found deep underground in newly created tunnels. Though originally believed to be Homo neanderthalensis specimens, the anatomy of the found skulls were identical to that of a Homo sapien. Level 2 hypnosuggestive agents Footnote 3 Prior to the discovery and widespread use of amnestics, the Foundation utilized hypnosuggestive agents to induce amnesia and maintain secrecy. Though very powerful, the drug often had nearly fatal side effects. Use of hypnosuggestive agents was discontinued in 1958. Were administered to all involved civilians, and the Foundation purchased ownership of Everwood Mine. Provisional Site 1200 was established near SCP-4003 shortly afterward, and the area of discovery was excavated. An investigation by the Department of Temporal Anomalies is currently ongoing, as is archaeological and paleontological work on SCP-4003. Addendum 1 Recovered Journals On July 26, 2008, a metal safe found to be in good condition was recovered from SCP-4003. Its contents are anomalously well-preserved and show no signs of aging. Items found in the safe include musket balls, revolver rounds, a rosary, daguerreotypes, and a journal. The journal is labeled as belonging to one Pendleton Tweed, a sheriff's deputy in Temperance. A collection of entries following Temperance's disappearance is available below. Note, the presented entries have been revised and edited to be easily legible by modern standards. 15th of November, Anno Domini, 1866. Sheriff Bone and I still can't make sense of what happened. Everyone remembers the white light and then nothing. I mean the sheriff, too. We all got up with our heads pounding, feeling like we drank the town dry. Old Pete, Mary, and Annette's kids was all dead, as well as most of the chickens and one of the horses. The out of towners were all right, said they saw the same thing, too. But what's strange is see is the boonies. It ain't how it used to be. It's all green now and with trees, too. I ain't never seen nothing like it before. It's like I was in paradise when I seen it. <laughs> Sheriff Boone says it ain't right, though. Says something's very wrong. Sheriff Boone's fixing a whole of town meeting with the outsiders and all the folk at first hour tomorrow. Well, he's burying the dead tonight. 16th of November, Anno Domini, 1866. Everyone's real uneasy about the situation. Folks are grieving, and the out-of-towners are itching to take off. Sheriff Boone says no one can leave unless they're part of the scouting posse he's getting together. Says we need to know what's around us. Sutton took the chickens, too. There's some strange tracks. Sure as I ain't no coyote. Damn thing left tracks, looking like real big chicken tracks. Must have come that night because no one's seen it. One of the dogs brought in a bomber too big to be a rat. It looked ugly and had a long face. I ain't never seen nothing like it, but <laughs> he ain't seen the mind. That old boy ain't it anyway. Father Jacob says we need to be strong and God will guide us. I pray we figure out what's happening soon, and for the posse safe return. 19th of November, Anno Domini, 1866. Bunch of the out-of-towners stabbed up Murrow in the middle of the night. Stole everything they could off his shop before taking off with some horses. They were in a real damn hurry, I reckon. They left behind the caravan. But it looks at things, they was prospectors heading up to California. A lot of digging tools and some dynamite. We's burying Merle later, but we's low on supplies now. Father Jacob and I are working on rationing what we got, but it won't last too long. Father Jacob keeps saying he's hearing things at night. But 
but he don't know what. He's asking me to stay out by the church and keep an eye out tonight. <sighs> I reckon since we's burying Merle, I might as well stay a spell. I pray Merle goes to heaven. He ain't deserve what come to him. It's all my fault for not being able to protect him. One eve of November, Anno Domini 1866. I swear on God, Father Jacob and I saw the demon last night. It was big, like a person, and it walked on two feet, but it had a neck like a snake and eyes like one too. It was making these sounds from hell, and it was digging in Merle's grave. Wasn't able to bury him too deep because of the mud, and I saw that monster eating old Merle's body. I fired at it, but too dark for me to hit the dang thing. Father Jacob says we in hell, being punished by God for not believing. He went and told everyone, and now they's in a panic. But he says as long as we keep praying, God will spare us from his wrath. I ain't thunk I was a sinner. No man's perfect, but I reckon I try being as close to God as one can. <sighs> I reckon I got a lot to think about. But now, the whole town's gone to the dogs. Everyone's panicking over what Father Jacob says. I put my foot down and I told him to quit it. Told him to pack it up and take it to the church if they want to proselytize. Can't have him scaring everyone like that, even if we surrounded by devils. Tonight I will pray for forgiveness and for protection. 21st of November, Anno Domini, 1866. Sheriff Boone, Red, and Jeremiah came back. They was missing a horse. Sheriff Boone says a giant devil with a head as big as a man snuck up on him when they were sleeping and picked up a horse in his mouth and tossed it like it was a toy. They hid and watched it eat up until the devil went away. It was as big as a building and longer than two, they says. The others said they seen more. Smaller, bigger, and of all colors. Food is scarce, and these rat varmints ain't big enough to feed one person. Let alone 30. Safety and food will be in my prayers tonight. 23rd of November, Anno Domini 1866. I reckon Father Jacob was right saying we's in hell after seeing what happened yesterday. It was attacked by dozens of little demons, all of them with long necks, teeth like knives, claws like vultures. They came from nowhere and killed a bunch of folk before we was able to drive them off. Sheriff Boone and Father Jacob got into a real nasty after. Sheriff Boone wanted to try and eat from the remains of these things. Father Jacob accused him of being a blasphemer, trying to tempt us to sin by eating the flesh of a demon. Says God is watching us. Sees him at night. That ain't stop Sheriff Boone. I reckon I'm a sinner after all. I'll pray to God for forgiveness in that. I know not what I've done, but I beg you, my Lord, to wash away my sin. 25th of November, Anno Domini, 1866. The night those demons attacked us, Father Jacob led the townsfolk to destroy all the alcohol in the town. They smashed it all up in the church and then locked themselves in there till just today. They says they was praying for our town. Says me and Sheriff Boone are sinners and the reason we is being cursed to be in hell. I still don't know what I've done to make everyone deserve this. Sheriff Boone says that I ain't at fault, but the townsfolk won't even look me in the eye no more. I got half a mind to go up and put a lead between Father Jacob's eyes for making a bad situation worse. But then I'd be just the same as he. Tonight I will pray for forgiveness again, as well as for the rain to stop. Damn frogs won't let me sleep. 28th of November, 1st of December, Anno Domini, 1866. Lots of folks are dead. Sheriff Boone is dead. The rain won't stop. I ain't slept in what feels like forever. Giant monster like I'd never seen before came in, making a whole town shake with his footsteps. It was bigger than any building I had seen before, and he had walked right up to the pile of demons and started eating them. Father Jacob and a few others came scrambling out of the church trying to exercise it, but it ate him. It was the scariest thing. One second he was there shouting about Christ, then all we hearing was the rain. Then it roared the worst sound I ever heard. Something fitting the demon it was. Townsfolk tried shooting at it, but the damn thing didn't even care. Just made it angry. All I could do was sit there and watch while Sheriff Boone ran out, grabbed some dynamite. The monster was fixing to kill the townsfolk, but Sheriff Boone caught its attention. Blew the damn thing's head off. And himself, too. Rain got worse before we could even try to move the demon away. I made everyone go home after that. Ain't no sense in being outside near all them bodies was gonna make more of them come. I don't reckon I know what to pray for no more. I saw God last night. I saw his light in the sky shining so bright near the moon. It was beautiful. I begged him for forgiveness. I begged him to learn what I did wrong. But God ain't answering me. 
I've been begging God for the rain to stop, for forgiveness and clarity. I see him in the sky in the day now, too. He's so bright behind these clouds I can feel his touch. But God ain't happy with me. I know my punishment's coming, and God Almighty himself is delivering it. One last time, I will pray for forgiveness tonight. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Rubbishbin69, Tannis, Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.